Welcome back to Swag and Sorcery, now a wonderful little village that now needs further upgrades. We're ready to try and get ourselves towards the Guild 2 upgrade, which gets us into Tier 3. And to get that going, we need to upgrade our Hunting Lodge first, because the Guild needs, uh, well, planks, maple planks, and we don't have anything to build them with yet. So let's upgrade that. It takes 12 logs, which I've gone out and got off camera. So up that goes to... The third tier and now we're getting a mystery guest it asks us to give a thousand gold and i've only got a thousand sixty that's not gonna happen sorry bye bye <laughs> now we need to go and then get the uh, the ingredients we need for this it'll remove the mist a little further and we'll get the increase of group size from two to three which is great uh one thing to note though these extra new levels they are level 24 to 50. we're level 9 and 10. So they can be a little bit difficult, uh, but doable, at least to get resources. So I'll just show you what I'm, I'll be doing. Basically, we're sending them out and you're able to get resources. And as soon as you actually hit someone, you can decide whether you actually want to fight them or whether you want to surrender and then you can go at them again. So let's just get those resources. And I think I'm going to surrender right there and off we go. So we then have one of the uh, new type of log, which of course we can, once we have two of them, we can make into planks. But that doesn't mean for, tw for 12 planks, I'm going to need 24 logs. So I'm not going to do that on camera. Back in a second. It's a guild uh, three. There we go. And I was hoping that was going to be three people per party. <laughs> Turns out. No, it's still gonna, still gonna be three parties. Okay. And yes, horses arrive by balloons, it seems. Okay. Unless this lets me. Yeah, this did say increase the maximum characters in a party. Uh, three? Yeah, okay, that does work. Okay, great. So we now have three parties of three. And uh, yeah, we don't have enough people to fill them just yet. And extra horses. <laughs> great. Okay, now the problem with this episode and the problem with this point in the game is that you have a shortage of gold. If we want to level anyone up, let's say Eddie, to get him up to, he's the frontline tank basically, we want to get him up to level 24 and above. But it costs two and a half thousand for each level, which is punishingly uh, high. So we're going to have to do that by crafting things and by quests as normal, but definitely crafting things. So uh, I got a Stargazer's hat. This sells for five grand. Uh, but uh, one thing I just want to check is what actually it will do. Let's take a look. Uh, so permanently saps minus six random attribute from the target and increases the same attribute of random ally by the same amount. Gives us lots of extra defense and stamina, but the level is too high. So I'm not going to worry about it for now. I'm going to just get rid of it. Uh, I'm not going to need it for now. So let's just get rid of it. That's an extra five grand. That'll give us another couple of levels, maybe. Um, let's just get... Uh, yeah, another couple of levels. Okay, so Eddie's up to level 16. Now, one thing I want to actually craft, and this is something I bought from over here at the uh, the fashion house, on um, this side, I think it is. Uh, where are you? No, you know, on that one. You're in this one. Is skin and leather. Now, skin and leather, remember in the episode or the episode before that, I was looking for an item that would automatically heal after every turn. And we did find one that did that, but it's very low this one not so much so at the beginning of every each move the hero recovers 10 to 60 percent of the damage he or she suffered since the previous move higher being better so 60 percent would be pretty cool however remember that we have a chance to uh, improve the quality of this so it could turn into blue it could go purple and there are other tiers above that i've already seen like a bright golden sort of color uh, that's popped up so yeah, I think I'm gonna concentrate on crafting this skin and leather item, but in order to do that, we're gonna need, well, lots of dark leather, but we have some of that. Uh, we are gonna need parasitoid wasp stingers, however. So if we just put these characters back in their original place and have a look. Now, it's one of these two. Uh, it's not you, you're for the dark, dark skin, that leather thing. There we go. So parasitoid wasp stingers come from dark ruins. You're going to need that to craft this item up. So I'm just going to send that party out and I'm going to ignore them because they're just going to be hopefully not, they're not hopefully not, they're not going to fail and they're just going to keep generating tier two resources. We are going to want to gather more characters. But we're going to be able to get up to eight, it seems, although we have nine spaces. So I'm not sure if this is going to get a scroll bar. Anyway, let's take a look at the quest that we've been asked for. 
So I've got to give the blacksmith three moon blazers, and we get a random amulet. Okay, not too too special. Give five gold supports, um, and we get some gold. And give the legendary amulet beetle assistant to the visitors from a distant village, and we get a reputation change. Okay, and then the main quest: he who must not be named. Yeah, let's 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 not go into Harry Potter references. Uh, oh yeah, and one of the commenters did get my Bob the Skull references. Um, Harry Dresden, by the way. Uh, if you haven't read those books, go read Harry Dresden. Uh, Dresden Files books. They're very very good and very funny. So His Majesty commands the heroes to go forth at once to the swamp, the hot springs, in the underground city. There's a chest hidden somewhere, and you want the suit still, uh, his costume, and we get gold reward. But obviously that's going to be the boss, so we're not going to be able to get much further on that. We're just going to keep sending these guys out and uh, we're going to, every time we get enough for one of those items, uh, the parasitoid wasp stingers, we're going to need to then just craft that into, oh in fact we don't need to craft it into anything, we can use it as it is. So every time they come back, what we're also going to do is look at this craft efficiency, that will raise the chance that things are going to be better. So we're going to want to probably get a strength character, it's probably going to be Eddie. There we go. So we get a 30% chance right now of getting that. So we'll continue sending Eddie out, and when we get gold, we're going to spend it on Eddie's levels and also on Eddie's strength. I think it's strength needed for the blacksmith shop. The further we increase that gauge, the more chance we have of getting the better items. One of them I already uh, equipped, and now we're going to take a look at the other two. So if we have a look here, 43% uh, and 26%. Obviously, we'll take the 43%, and we'll equip that one. This one then becomes a hand-me-down. <laughs> so, uh, although the blue is better for much better for defense, it does require level 12 instead of 10. So what I'm going to do is just look to equip. Uh, we ha don't have the other two leveled up yet, but we could just look at Mariko. Oh, Mariko, sorry. And, um, yeah, she could wear those as well. So, we'll replace the Master's Shoes. We've got the Master's Cloak, we do, which gives her intelligence. That's quite important. That's one other thing I didn't mention, by the way. Because we can raise their intelligence by training, we can also raise it by gear, which means we can improve the chances to craft higher quality goods by giving them gear that give them primary stat. Um, we, you know, we don't need to worry about it just yet, but uh, we can then sell these couple of things and then head back out. So at this point, both of our main characters have something on them that will um, will increase, well, will actually regenerate. Let me show you what, what happens. So I'm not going to use the, the current tier 3, I'm just going to send them into the Dark Ruins, the previous tier. So you'll see, they're going to get damaged. And wait for them to get to the next uh, thing, next monster. Hopefully they will both regenerate, we'll see. So here they come. And you'll see, they actually healed as they got damaged. Let's see that again. Well, we will if they actually were taking enough damage. They are on the previous tier, remember? Hmm, they may not do that. Let me fast forward to the next tier and you'll see it more closely because I can only usually deal with one or two characters on the next tier up. On this tier. <laughs> I promise they will get to something that damages them, uh, although every time they get more of these logs, that's great because the logs are the primary resource we need to upgrade all the other buildings. So, yep, so there we go. We took some damage, and there is the uh, the healing, and there's the healing again. So, yeah, unfortunately, this next tier up is really hard. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't generally only surrender once they actually get through some resources and uh, Moriko can go back to town. So let's just get that done and uh, we can go back to town and we'll surrender there. Okay. Retreat. Okay, and full heal as normal. So we're up to 3,830 and we should probably get Moriko up to 12 as well if the blue tier of that those um, those trousers are anything to go by. Um, do we, how can we afford it? Eh, not really too much yet. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just swap these back out, back to their, um, in fact, yeah, uh, Dark Ruins. I'm just going to send our B team out to go and gather resources, because they can go and keep getting those wasp stingers, and we can keep on then crafting stuff in here using uh, our main character. So let's just try one more, 15 seconds. We can do the same thing over here, and one thing to mention here is the Master's Cloak. I did see that on Moriko, but you can increase the intelligence of whoever is wearing it. 
and presumably there's going to be a similar item for strength. I haven't found it, but that might be useful if there is. Um, we want one with a fist. Uh, 2 to 14, that's damage. No, I want strength. Hmm, I'll have to look for one. But ideally we want one for strength and dex as well, and we'll want those characters to equip them at least while they're actually crafting stuff. How did this one do? So skin and leather, that's only 20%. That's ter terrible. Although we could give it to these two characters, which might help a little bit, but I'd rather give them something around 40 or greater. So we'll sell it. And uh, yes, victory for them. But um, yeah, so we keep on going. We're going to repeat that process and continue to increase the strength of Eddie. We'll just go back in here again now. Eddie, uh, not equipment, sorry. Uh, going back to training. Eddie. And you'll see it's already getting quite expensive to increase his strength. <laughs> I've been doing it for a little while, let's put it that way. So uh, we can bring that up again. And he's up to 100 strength. And uh, maybe do that three more times. It's getting very, very expensive to go much further. So I will leave that alone for now. And uh, what's the chance now? 36%. So we're getting near the top of the gauge. <laughs> I assume it's 40% maximum, but we'll see as we actually go forward. And now we've got enough logs to upgrade our smithy. So that'll take the next set tier of ore. So let's build that. Okay, it's looking a little bit more industrial now. And then we're able to craft titanium. So we've gathered quite a lot of it. So we can put uh, really any strength character on it. I don't really care about much about trying to get higher resources there. So we'll get that done by um, our first part, well, our B team. And while we send them back out in our A team. So uh, yeah, um, we don't get any wood maybe from the underground city, but we do get from the swamp. Uh, is there anything else I particularly need? No, I just think uh, I'll just go on the basic one. There we go. So I'll see you once I get to the next upgrade. I think that's, is that probably going to be the fashion house? Yeah, we're going to need some maple planks. I'm going to need some titanium ingots and some gold. So we'll go and craft a couple more of those uh, trousers. Hopefully get some better upgrades to get us more tanky. Now we're a little bit further on, but we've got a lot more progress here just by addition of one more item. I'll show you the item in a second. Just watch what happens. Whenever Eddie's shooting things, he gains 32 health. Whenever he gets hit, he's regenerating health. So in total, he, well, he's not quite up to full every time, but he is a lot tankier. See there, he's gone up back to full health. And uh, yeah, they're getting a lot further on into this area. area. Now, whoops, let's just send these guys out again. We don't need those. So what's actually happening here is I crafted another item. So over here in this area in the smithy, you'll see the moon diadem. Now that has a chance of vampirism. So 3 to 22 points of your character's health um, gets restored whenever you successfully hit an enemy. However, however, they can roll better quality, and that's exactly what happened on this one. This one rolled into this orange, yellow, golden colour, <laughs> and rolled uh, two rolls of vampirism. So 21 vampirism and 11 vampirism. So the maximum could be like 44 if it rolled twice. It also rolled intelligence, unfortunately, and Eddie's isn't really good with intelligence. However, um, they did roll this vampirism. It, I could sell it for six grand, but he can then basically every time he hits something, he gets 32 health. Every time something hits him, well, we also rolled these. 57% of the damage he receives, well, the damage he takes, will get um, regenerated. That's not the maximum, however, because this is still the the base green quality. What I'd love to see what happens is rolling this quality, the golden quality, whatever it is, and seeing what actually rolls on that level of it. So I'm going to continue keep on doing that, and we're getting a little bit of uh, a little bit of revenue as we're actually going through. Uh, do we have enough for another one of those yet? Um, yes, we do. So we'll get Eddie to do that, and let's see if he actually crafts a high quality version. Because we're also getting both of these other characters up to around level 12. Level 12 is still the minimum of this item. And uh, what do we need down here? Oh, this is for more planks. Let's just get those crafted while we're doing this. So what have we got for this? 58. So that again is very close to the maximum. We're going to probably give that to Moriko. And then she can... Uh, there we go. Yep, yeah, it's level 10. And basically she can go from 42% to 58%. Good, and then we'll sell the originals. 
we obviously craft more, but we want sort of want 60%-ish for all of our characters at least, and we'll see how they get on. So I've just upgraded the Fashion House to Fashion House 3, so the whole bunch more different stuff that we can actually get in here. And some highlights that I want to point to. Uh, no more regen stuff that I've seen so far. Maybe I'm missing it. You can put it down in the comments if I have. However, there is space armor, and that is an interesting effect of giving me more gold. And I would like more and more gold. So every time you hit an enemy, you get 10 to 50 gold. So if you get a max roll of that, maybe you even got the next tier up. Over 50 gold an enemy, uh, every time you hit it, would mean hundreds and hundreds of gold for every uh, every excursion. So that would be really, really nice. Uh, is there anything else in here that I would like? I'd sort of like um, guns or, you know, um, ranged weapons, really, of any kind. We've got a tech crossbow. That's quite nice. Um, the hero re re recovers 20% of the damage he or she suffered since the previous move. Some more regen. Quite happy with that if we can combine it with everything else. And then there's the massive shotgun, which also <laughs> gives us more and more gold. So we can decide for ourselves which ones we want there, but I think one of those two for our, at least for our ranged characters, will be pretty good. And speaking of the massive shotgun, let's go and craft one. Let's see how good it is. I think I'm going to give it to the B team. Again, to, to um, this guy here, um, whatever his name is, I can never remember. Uh, because he's going to be getting lots more mobs. We normally have to give up with our main team. Unless it's, this is massively more damage, of course. So let's take a look. Uh, we get 98 gold every time they hit an enemy. So why don't we take a look at the stats relative. So Noel, uh, relative to your other stuff, this is slightly less damage. But we don't really much mind about the damage so much as farming lots of gold. Remember, they're in the last tier. So I think I will trade those out quite gladly. And then we'll be able to sell the old one, which is terrible. And maybe get uh, get him a couple more levels. So why don't we just uh, train him so we can get better chances at higher end stuff later. So we want his agility training, which is going to give him... Uh, better chance. There we go, agility. So we'll put a few levels into that. As you can imagine, that gets expensive really quickly. He's only up to 52, unlike uh, Eddie is up at 9700 or something like that, but uh, that's more than enough for now, and we'll probably want to train him. So let's just send them off, and let's see uh, about the effect of this. So fight it is. So <laughs> I was expecting it just to be resources, you know, just no mobs. It's just my luck. Let's give it a go. So that's uh, 42. Um, okay, well, we haven't got much gold yet. Uh, are you going to do that? Come on. Unless it's just going directly into my account. Is it? It looks like it is. So 1,077. Is that going to increase while I'm actually uh, out here? Or will it not show? Oh, they've all got all the resources. I need to wait for them to actually get somewhere. So it's not going to show on this counter at all. Let's see if it can shows on the main counter while they're out there. So they're kind of going up to an enemy. Let's just take a look at here. Are they going to gain money? Hopefully they are. Is it only count while I'm not while I'm looking at it, or only when they come back in? Hmm, that doesn't seem right. He is getting equipped, right? So no. Every time a character hits an enemy, the player gets 98 gold. Well, maybe. Um, let's send them out again, I guess. Let's see if that actually is the case. No, it does work either when you're not looking at it or looking at it. It doesn't really much matter. You can see it's gaining right now as uh, Noah's actually shooting. So what I may well do is, between the episodes, I'm going to go and craft more of those shotguns. I'm going to give it to both of our characters on our B team. They're going to be generating resources for us. And we should probably give up at that point. Uh, there we go. Uh, they normally make it all the way through, but um, yeah, they need to get some of the regenerating gear as well. We don't have those for those characters yet, which reminds me, uh, do I have... Um, whoops, it's in the other thing. Do I have enough resources for that yet? I need some more dark leather. So that's Hunting Lodge, and Hunting Lodge is... Uh, well, we've got more than enough for some leather. Let's put those to use and let's see if we can get a couple of pieces of armor or maybe even just one for these two guys. And yeah, I was able to do that. So now all four of our characters have all got skin and leather trousers 
and they should all be regenerating. Now, they don't all have the shotgun yet, but I'll be doing that between the episodes. This is probably a good time for me to split between the episodes because they need to do a lot more work. Uh, go and getting some more gold, getting them up a little bit more in levels. We're going to bring you back in the next episode, probably when they're a little bit, little bit higher up, and when we've got more of these uh, these available guns, and maybe also purchasing that space armor to get even more gold. Um, there it is, space armor. Yep. So I'm going to need to cra uh, craft bubbles, and uh, that means I need to send them out to the underground city. And uh, we can craft the other ingredient in the magic store. So uh, there we go. We need Chitin, which is Underground City. So I need to send these guys to the Underground City. And hopefully they'll survive for a little while. There we go. Um, well, yeah, maybe more than survive. However, uh, there's a toad. We should be able to get the ingredients from that. They're doing quite well. They're able to regenerate quite well. So yeah, there's one of the bubbles. So yeah, we need to do a little bit of farming between the episodes. And then these guys, again, because they can regenerate now and they're going to generate me passive revenue, uh, we'll continue rolling for the um, for the skin and leather because these have got the hand-me-downs and the other characters have got the main sets. The main set is around about 60%. The hand-me-downs are like 40 to 50, that's something like that. So good enough for the second tier, but not good enough for the first tier of stuff that we want to do. So I'll make sure they continue to keep on getting buffed. And the next episode, I'll hopefully join you with some more gold gathering tips once I've had a look through the rest of the gear down here. I think there's probably some more stuff we can get to actually uh, increase our gold gathering. Until then, hopefully you enjoyed the episode, and we'll see you next time for some more swag and sorcery. As always, guys, thanks for watching.